Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and welcome to Field Test, a series where we sleeve up my latest experiment and see how it operates out in the wild. If you want to see me run these decks through their paces live, or perhaps get the chance to duel moi, you can catch me right here on YouTube every Friday at 8pm Central Time. Subscribing will keep you posted, and if you want to stay in the loop on any updates, follow the link in the description for my Twitter. Okay, shameless self-promotion aside, let's talk about today's thought experiment, Plunder Patrol! Yes, we're taking this bombastic barge of high seas hijinks out into open waters once again to see if we can improve our vessel's performance. Following up from our last field test on the subject, link in the corner, we found that the patrol ships were legitimately very powerful and could run games all on their own. But while it was fairly easy to get a ship or two out of the dock, we lacked the ammunition to maintain suppressive fire. This was likely due to running a rather large hand trap suite. In an attempt to main deck the attributes we needed to make the most out of Emblem of the Plunder Patrol, we ended up cutting cards that had the Plunder Patrol name that allowed us to actually use the ships. Also, I essentially tried to use reactive hand traps to try to promote the power of the proactive Emblem. Clearly I was possessed by the same thinking that hyped up three tactical talents, a mistake I will do my best to avoid in the future. In this build we've cut the hand traps, and are now focusing on ways to execute our plays while keeping our hands stocked up. A big thanks to the commenters on my previous Plunder Patrol videos, because I wouldn't have gotten anywhere near these ideas without your help. Notable changes are the inclusions of Gen X Undyne and Salvage. Undyne, coming out of retirement after its storied history with Mermail, makes Blackbeard all by itself. You just send Goldenhair to the grave to search Gen X Controller, then pitch Controller to summon Goldenhair. Alternatively, you can pitch a white beard you may already have in hand, giving you a Blackbeard and a Plunder Patrol ready to helm a new ship. Salvage is also fantastic. Every main deck Plunder Patrol has stats that fit neatly into its targets, so you can recur them to use as material for summons, or keep them in hand to load your patrol ship cannons. With all that in mind, let's do a breakdown of the deck I piloted. We're running 3 White Beard, 3 Red Beard, 3 Blue Beard, 3 Golden Hair, 3 Gen X Undyne, 1 Gen X Controller, 3 Plunder Patrol Shipyard, 3 Emblem of the Plunder Patrol, 3 Plunder Patrol Ship Shape Ship Shipping, 3 Performer Pal Popper Up, 2 Salvage, 1 Foolish Burial Goods, 1 Metal Foes Fusion, 1 Terraforming, 2 Plunder Patrol Booty, 1 Pride of the Plunder Patrol, 1 Plunder Patrol Party, and 3 Solemn Judgment. In the extra, we're running 2 Blackbeard, 2 Lease, 2 Bran, 2 Mowark, 1 Boral Sword Dragon, 1 White Aura Whale, 1 Bahamut Shark, one Abyss Dweller, one Totally Awesome, one Boral Sword Dragon, and one Nightmare Phoenix. And now, onto the test footage. Our first opponent is Burning Abyss, one of my all-time favorite decks. But change is inevitable. I must prove that I have grown beyond the confines of the Malabranch into a more evolved form of fiend. Goblins. They'll start by playing Foolish Burial, sending Graf to Grave. They'll activate Graf by summoning Seer from deck, then normal summoning Phoenish Rhino Warrior. They'll link the two into Cherubini, and then activate Seer and Phoenish Rhino Warrior on a new chain. Phoenish Rhino will send Skarm, while Seer will special summon Graf from Grave. They'll activate Cherubini, sending Kagna to Grave, and then Kagna will send Good and Evil to the Graveyard. They'll set two Fire Lakes, and activate Skarm at End Phase to add Tour Guide. On our turn, we'll activate Popper Up, discarding another Popper Up, Ship 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 Shipping in Whitebeard. This will trigger Whitebeard, letting a special summon Redbeard from deck, while normal Golden Hair, then link into Blackbeard. We'll activate Redbeard's effect to attach the Blackbeard, then play Emblem. This will prompt their Fire Legs, sending Cherubini and Graf, but we'll chain the Blackbeard's effect so that we can summon more from the extra deck, attaching the Blackbeard. This will trigger their Graf, special summoning Scarm from deck, but we'll activate Moark, discarding Ship Shape so that we can banish it and search Booty. We'll activate Terraforming, searching Shipyard, then activate it, discarding Pride so that we can search Whitebeard. We'll activate Golden Hair and Grave to summon it by discarding Whitebeard, banish Ship Shape from Grave to attach it with Emblem, and use Emblem's effect to special summon Blackbeard and attach Golden Hair. We'll go to Battle Phase and attack for 3100 before setting Booty and passing to them. On their turn, they'll play Dark Hole, wiping our whole field. They'll normal summon Tour Guide and activate its effect, but we'll chain with Booty so that we can special summon Blackbeard from Grave. On resolution, they'll summon Farfa from deck, and then overlay into Dante. They'll activate their effect, attaching Farfa to Mill 3, activating Alec and Farfa on the same chain, both targeting Blackbeard, but we'll chain Blackbeard to summon Moark from the extra deck to dodge the effects. They'll set Strike and go to Battle Phase. On attack, we'll chain Moark, discarding Emblem so we can banish the Dante, and at that point, they've seen enough and concede. Next up is Danger Zombies. Hey, if we put our themes together, would we just be Pirates of the Caribbean? You best start believing in shadow duels, Miss Goldenhair. You're in one. 
They'll start by playing Zombie World and activating Mothman, but they hit it, so we both draw and discard. We discarded a White Beard, so we'll summon Redbeard from deck. They'll activate Jackalope, but we'll chain the Redbeard to summon Mork from Extra, attaching the Redbeard. They hit the Jackalope, so they summon Suchinoko from deck. They'll activate another Mothman in hand, discarding the Jack of Bolin, and they'll link summon the two dangers for Vampire Sucker. We'll activate Mork in response, discarding Golden Hair to banish it. Then they'll activate Mizuki and Grave to summon the Jack of Bolin. They'll normal Necroworld Banshee and link it to Avenger Savior, then pass to us. We'll activate Shipyard, discarding Metal Foes Fusion to search for Whitebeard. We'll activate Morg, discarding the Whitebeard to banish the Savior and search for Ship Shape. This will trigger Whitebeard, summoning Redbeard from deck. Then we'll activate Golden Hair, discarding the Ship Shape to summon Hearn, Synchro for Bran. We'll attach the Redbeard and then discard Party to banish the Zombie World and search for Bluebeard. We'll special the Bluebeard, then activate Ship Shape, banishing it to equip Emblem. Then activate Emblem's effect to summon Blackbeard. This will activate Party to attach to it. We'll shuffle the Metal Foes Fusion back to draw a card, then attack directly for 51 and 3500 for game. All right, next on the docket is Dragon Maid. Eternity Code has blessed the deck with some much-needed upgrades, but they aren't the only ones. Can their update stand up to ours? We'll start by playing Shipyard, discarding Ship Shape to search for Bluebeard. We'll activate Foolish Burial Goods to send another Shipyard, and then Normal Summon Bluebeard, attaching our Emblem. We'll activate the Emblem to special Summon Blackbeard and attach the Bluebeard, but they'll chain Impermanence and Phantasme. Oh dear. Okay, check this out. We'll activate the Shipyard and Grave to bounce the Bluebeard to hand to activate the other Shipyard, then we'll special summon that Bluebeard so that Blackbeard has something to crew a ship with next turn. We'll activate Shipyard to attach Blackbeard with Emblem, then pass to them. They'll start by playing Dragon Maid Changeover to Fusion Summon for Strahl, then Normal Summon Nurse to special summon Chamber from Grave, searching for Dragon Maid Hospitality with its effect. They'll link for Black Luster Soldier and use Strahl to attack Blackbeard. We'll attempt to chain its effect, but Strahl will negate and destroy Blackbeard, special summoning House in its place. They'll use Black Luster Soldier to attack Bluebeard, which will allow us to discard a card or draw a card, but when BLS resolves, it'll banish our field spell. House will attack us directly for 3,000, they'll activate Hospitality to bring back Nurse and send Aranus, and then pass to us. On our turn, we draw absolutely nothing that will help, so we pass to them. They'll have Changeover's Graveyard Effect return Nurse from field to hand to get back the Changeover. They'll normal the Nurse to special summon Chamber so they can search Dragon Maid Cleanup, then they'll move to Battle Phase. Nurse will turn to hand to summon Ernest, and then Chamber will turn to hand to summon Tinkek. They'll attack directly for 3,000 and 3,000 for game. Okay, let's round things out with a match. Rank Up Yu-Gi-Oh! has stepped up to the plate once again, piloting, and I kid you not, Trap Tricks Dragma. A combination that makes more sense the more I think about it. I can't tell if I love or hate it, but I'll have to push that ambivalence aside for now, because it's time for the climactic duel of Trolls vs. Trap Tricks. They'll start by normal summoning Mermillo to search Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare, link into Trap Tricks Sarah, set for, and pass to us. We'll start by playing Ship Shape Ship Shipping to Fusion Summon for Lease using Redbeard and Whitebeard as material, activating both of their effects. Redbeard will attach to Lease and Whitebeard will special summon Golden Hair from deck. They'll activate Treacherous Trap Hole targeting both of them, and we'll activate Lease in response to summon Whitebeard from our hand, but it's not going to do us much good. On our new chain, Sarah will activate her effect summoning Mantis from deck, and we try to special summon Bluebeard, they'll chain Mantis' effect to reset one of their traps. On our new chain, they'll activate Sarah's effect, setting a trap from their deck. We'll go to Battle Phase to try to attack over Sarah, but they'll chain Dragma Punishment, sending Bastard to destroy Whitebeard. In Main Phase 2, we'll activate Golden Hair and Grave, but they'll activate Gravedigger's Trap Hole to negate and burn us for 2,000. We'll banish Ship Shape to equip Emblem over to Bluebeard, and we'll activate Emblem's effect to summon Elise. We'll pass to End Phase, and then the Dragma will special summon Ecclesia from deck, using its effect to search Fleur de Lis to their hand. On their turn, they'll normal summon Genelicia, attributing it to set two trap holes, one from their grave and one from their deck. This will activate Sarah's effect, setting another trap from their deck. They'll activate Fleur de Lee in hand, and we'll chain Lee, so we might as well, it's about to get negated anyway. In battle phase, they'll have Fleur de Lee attack Lee, boosting all their dragons by 500, Mantis will attack over Bluebeard, and we'll get hit directly by Ecclesia and Sarah for 2800. With nothing else, they'll pass to us. For turn, we draw Pride of the Plunder Patrol, and we try to use that to revive Golden Hair, but they reset the Gravedigger's Trap Hole, so they negate it and burn us for another 2,000. We'll select Fate Sarah's effect to summon Dionea from deck, and Dionea will reset the Treasure's Trap Hole from their graveyard. We'll pass to End Phase, and during that, they'll use Mantis' effect to reset the Treasure's Trap Hole so it doesn't get banished. On their turn, they'll move right to Battle Phase and end things with Sarah. See what I mean? That was crazy! But I'm sure we'll get him this time. We'll start by normal summoning Whitebeard and special summoning Bluebeard from hand, overlaying into Bahamut Shark. We'll detach a material to summon Totally Awesome, set Booty and Call by the Grave, and pass to them. During their turn, they'll activate Fleur de Lee, and we'll shotgun the Toad because Fleur de Lee could attack over either of our monsters. We'll have Toad reset itself to the extra deck for Shark to summon later, but joke's on us, they've got Albus, so they'll use our Shark as Fusion Material for Bastard. In Battle Phase, they'll attack over Fleur de Lee, and they'll go to Main Phase 2 and set 2, we'll activate Booty, summoning Whitebeard and turning Bastard into a Fire Monster. We'll activate Whitebeard to summon Bran, then pass to them. On our turn, we activate Booty to turn Bastard into a Light type and summon Bluebeard from Grave. We'll link the two into Nightmare Phoenix to try to get rid of some of their back row, but when we try to use Bluebeard's effect, they activate Gravedigger Trap Hole to negate it and we lose 2,000 life points. We shuffle Metal Flow Fusion into our deck for something to help us, but Pride does not help. During the end phase, we lose Booty because we don't control a Plunder Patrol. 
On their turn, they'll normal summon a Mermillo and use its effect to search for Gravedigger's Trap Hole. They'll go to Battle Phase and have Bazard attack over Phoenix, and then Mermillo attack us directly. In Main Phase 2, they'll Link Summon for Sarah, set the Gravedigger's Trap Hole, and pass to us. On our turn, we draw Called by the Grave, which is effectively a whiff, and we pass to them. On their turn, they normal summon Mantis, using its effect to search for Dianea. This will trigger Sarah, setting a Hole Trap from their deck. They'll go to Battle Phase and have Bastard attack us for 29, and Sarah will attack us for 800 to close out the game. Well, that was... certainly a match. I feel like we got transported back to Primal Origin days because that was the most hat duel I've had in a while. So, how did we do in addressing the shortcomings we identified during the last go-around? Well, on all fronts, I think we nailed it. Undyne helped make plunder boards with minimal investment. We were never in a position where we couldn't use our ship's effects. And Salvage did a great job of topping up our hand so that we could fuel our ships or restart plays. Yet, going back through all the replay footage, I feel like we actually did worse. We lost hard against a lot of modern decks, and I think I've identified what I did wrong. In my haste to cut all the hand traps to make room for more Plunder Patrol cards, I've removed all ability for us to interrupt our opponent before our game plan goes live, leaving us very vulnerable to interactive opponents. Effectively, I've brewed a Plunder Patrol deck that's actually very good, but only in a vacuum, not accounting for what an opponent would actually do. At this point, I need to find a healthy balance. Keeping the deck at 40 cards is a must, so we have to identify which cards can be cut for hand traps, as well as powerful equalizers like Lightning Storm and Evenly Matched, but we can't go too far, or else the deck will stall out too often, giving our opponents an opportunity to retaliate. Next time, we'll combine Plunder Patrols with something a bit more radical. But in the meantime, what do you all think about the direction the deck is going? Will some more tune-ups help put the theme back on competitive course? Or are we doomed to be set adrift like so much Flotsam and Jetsam? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed, please make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye